This is lesson five of chapter six. And this lesson will talk about something called molecular geometry. And this refers to the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms uh, in a molecule. So for example, a water molecule, uh, we will learn about how it looks, how it actually, if you were to look at it and see it, what you would see. And what's going to drive this is something called the Vesper theory. It's pronounced Vesper. And what this theory says, actually, the acronym means valence shell electron pair repulsion. And essentially what it says is that the electron pairs around the atom uh, or around the molecule will repel each other and become oriented as far as possible from each other. Essentially what we're saying is that electrons don't like to be near each other, so they will try to go to opposite sides of the molecule as far as possible. And then this will determine the three-dimensional arrangement of the molecule. So there's about five shapes that we'll talk about, and you'll have to know these shapes, and we'll show you how to predict these shapes from the Lewis structures of the molecules. So the first shape is something called linear. And you have uh, molecular uh, models here. So linear, if you have two atoms, you get a linear arrangement. You can also have a linear arrangement if you have three atoms. The designation here, AB, means you have one atom A, another atom B. So these are two different atoms. You can see here the red and the uh, gray. You can also have AB2, which means you have one gray atom and two red atoms. The examples are HBr. So if you were to draw HBr as a Lewis structure, here's what you would see. And this then matches the shape, uh, the three-dimensional shape that would result. CO2 would look like this. And uh, we learned about drawing these little structures in the previous lessons. So I'm just going to quickly review that by showing you the structures. Notice what CO2 looks like. It looks like a linear arrangement, like this molecule. So this is called linear, the simplest of the bunch. The next is called trigonal planar. Now, trigonal means you have three atoms oriented in a triangle. And planar means they're in the same plane. So which means one is not above, one is not below. So a, a plane, you may know, so here's a triangle that's a plane. So this, say if this is a three-dimensional, looks like a piece of cheese. Every corner here lies in the same plane, you can say. N no above, no below. And this is easier seen when you actually show it in three dimensions, and we will show you that in class. The example here is SO3. So if you were to draw SO3's lowest structure, here is what it would look like it will actually look like this. If you use the rules to draw its lowest structure. You'll notice that sulfur in the middle has three, one, two, three areas of electrons around it. Those three areas will go as far as they can from each other, creating this arrangement. This is called trigonal planar. The next one is called trigonal pyramidal. This one's actually similar to the trigonal planar. Again, you have three atoms, that's why trigonal, and they're arranged in a triangle. You can still see the triangle here. And, but in this case, it's pyramidal. So instead of being planar, it's in a pyramid shape. So the pyramid shape means in three dimensions, it actually looks like this. So one of the atoms is here, and the rest of the atoms are below it. It is no longer in a plane. Previously, we had them be in a plane. Previously, they were just like this in a plane. But now, they're no longer in a plane. The reason they're not in a plane is because of the lone here. So here you have one A atom, three B atoms, and an E. The E refers to this pair of electrons. Notice you have an A, three Bs, and a pair of electrons. The example is NH3, and here is what this example would look like. If you could, uh, if you could see it, if you draw its lowest structure out, NH3 would look like this. Notice you have three atoms, or three areas of electrons, but you have this extra lone pair. And essentially, this extra lone pair will push these bonds down away from it. And actually, they become like this, oriented like this. I know it's getting a bit messy, but because they're oriented downward, you get yourself this trigonal pyramidal arrangement. Again, you'll see this in three dimensions in class, and it'll make a little more sense. The next one is tetrahedral. This one's actually the most common. And tetrahedral actually refers to a figure, a three-dimensional figure made 
whenever you have four different atoms around the central atom. So that's when you have one A and four B, so the A would be in the middle. When you have four atoms on the outside and they go as far as they can from each other, they will form this shape. It's called a tetrahedron. A tetrahedron is actually a three-dimensional four-sided figure. Now a three-dimensional six-sided figure is a cube. Usually people are used to cubes, but cubes actually have six sides. One, two, three, and then three more on the opposite side. A three-dimensional four-sided figure is actually a tetrahedron. And this is what it forms. So here you have one a face. This is a figure that has four faces. Here is another face. There is a face on the bottom, that hard to see, and there's also a face on the back. There are actually four faces on this tetrahedron, and it forms this shape. The, essentially, the four atoms go as far as they can from each other. The example CH4 would look like this. Now, on paper, this looks like a square. You'd think that you'd call this a square because these four hydrogens go to four corners, you can say of a square. What, what I mean by that is if you were to draw it, well, it's kind of like a diamond, but if you flip it a little bit, it looks like a square. However, because these exist in three dimensions, they will pull away from each other a little more, causing you to see a three-dimensional tetrahedron. So we'll show you this in class, live, and you'll see it a little easier. The last shape and the most uh, confusing and, and uh, most missed shape is something called bent. Now bent happens whenever you have one central atom, two outside atoms, and then two pairs of electrons. You see it here in this molecule. So here is your A atom, here are your two B atoms, and you have two lone pairs of electrons. Because of these lone pairs of electrons, this will not be linear. This is very often confused with linear. Now, if you draw out H2O, here is what you'll see, and here is how we've drawn it out. We've drawn it out with two electrons above, two electrons below. And it looks like it's linear because it's just drawn in a line, but in fact, it is not linear. Because in three dimensions, these electron pairs will push these down. And as they push them down, this is the shape that results. Really, this shape results from a tetrahedral arrangement. Tetrahedral arrangement. If you think of a tetrahedral arrangement like we've had before, and then, so in the tetrahedral arrangement, there used to be two more bonds here. If you remove those two bonds and just cause them to be electrons, here is what will be left over. This is the shape. Let me attempt to draw what I mean here. So in the tetrahedral arrangement, we had an atom here, an atom here, we had an atom here, and then we had an atom that kind of looks like this. This was the tetrahedral arrangement. Now notice if I take two of these atoms and get rid of them and replace them with lone pairs of electrons, here is what you'll see. You will see this bent shape. That was uh, an attempt to draw this on paper. It's much more easily seen in three dimensions, and we will show you that in three dimensions as we get to class. So why not we try a few of these? And let's go ahead and try to name them. So it says give the molecular geometries of each of the following. The first thing we'll do is draw the structure. Now I'll draw the structures quickly. You can pause and try to draw them on your own. The CF4 molecule will look like this. There'll be a carbon in the middle. There'll be four fluorines on the outside. Now you'll need to do this by counting how many valence electrons <clears throat> and then distributing them around the outside. And what you'll see is that each fluorine will have a full octet. The carbon in the middle will have an octet, as required by the octet rule. And here is the structure that you'll see. For pH 3, you'll have a similar structure, except we'll do, there's going to be a phosphorus in the middle, three hydrogens around the outside. The hydrogens don't need any more electrons, and we'll put a lone pair in phosphorus. Again, you, will do the, you would do this by drawing them out. H2S would look like this. There'll be a sulfur in the middle and two hydrogens around it. Hydrogens don't need more than two, so here's the shape. And SO3, finally, will look like this. You'll have three on the outside. In fact, let me put, them, let me put that one there so it's a little easier to see. And then you'll fill each one of these with lone pairs, and there'll be a double bond here. Except, again, you would draw these uh, slowly on your own using the Lewis structure rules 
The biggest thing here is for us to name them. Now, because this first one has one, two, three, four bonds, or four areas of electrons around the central guy, we'll call this tetrahedral. Tetrahedral because tetrahedral is the only one that has all four spots filled with atoms, in this case with four fluorine atoms. So this one is actually tetrahedral. And it actually would look something like this. You'd have the four fluorines all the way around the carbon. So it would be tetrahedral in three dimensions. This next one has one, two, three atoms on the outside, but it has a lone pair. Now this lone pair will actually make the rest of these bonds push down, and you'll create a trigonal, because we have three, but the trigonal will be pyramidal, not planar. It's important that it's pyramidal, and it's pyramidal because of this extra pair. Remember, pairs repel each other, so this pair actually repels the other pairs, and these guys actually repel each other because they're all electron pairs, so they try to be as far as they can from one another. This next one looks like it's linear, but don't be deceived, because of these two extra pairs, these are actually pushed away from it in three dimensions. You can say they're pushed down into the board, down into the board, and this one is actually bent. Now, it would be linear if you did not have these lone pairs of electrons. Then it would be linear, otherwise it's bent. And finally, for this last one, we have the uh, sulfur having one, two, three areas around it, or electron areas around it. And since you have three around it, three atoms, it'll be trigonal. However, because there is no lone pair out here, it'll be trigonal planar. They will be in a plane to go as far as they can from each other. Essentially, here is what you would see, and they would be oriented in this in this way. It'll be a plane. In other words, all of these lie in the same plane. Okay, so hopefully this makes a little bit of a sense. Uh, as usual, we will make much more sense when we do a bunch in class. Go ahead and try these on your own. Draw these molecules. Take some time to draw them. And for your Lewis structure drawing pleasure, we have a few polyatomic ions. And then try to come up with the shape of these substances. This completes for us lesson five of chapter six.